welcome to the Biologic Movie Review of the 1979 movie Alien. It's a classic science fiction horror film wherein the crew of a mining ship get invaded by an alien entity that reproduces in a horrific and deadly way. I'll skim through the movie's plot and spend a few minutes talking about the various aspects of biology that the movie portrays. Aliens begins with the crew moving through space aboard the ship Nostromo, all in some kind of stasis chamber or hibernation pod. The ship's computer detects a distress signal on a nearby planet, and as a basic procedure, it awakens the crew. They all appear to thaw or rewarm out of this hibernation pod, and then slowly wake up. The crew members make sarcastic comments about how uncomfortable it is to be in an induced hibernation, and they all get dressed and have a nice breakfast of space food. The concept of induced hibernation, as it applies to space travel, has been a popular concept in science fiction for decades, and the neat part is that it's actually potentially feasible. By studying the various ways in which animals hibernate, we can learn how organic bodies can be manipulated such that they mimic or induce outright hibernation. It could be possible to use gene splicing to enable humans to express the antifreeze proteins found in Alaskan frogs that can survive being literally frozen inside and out in ice over the seven or eight month winter. It could be possible that we use some kind of pressurized chamber to supercool a human body so the water within is chilled without forming ice crystals. Any ice crystals formed during hibernation would destroy cell membranes, and basically any ice crystals formed during hibernation would destroy cell membranes and basically tear the individual apart on a cellular level. It's most likely that we'll be able to induce hibernation through some kind of repetitive sleep-wake cycles, like bears do, which are another endothermic mammal alongside humans. Anyway, the crew is awoken from stasis, and they identify the source of the distress signal detected by the ship's computer. They go towards the source, which turns out to be an alien ship derelict on the surface of a rugged planet. The crew goes inside the alien ship to explore, and they find a series of rooms. Uh, in one of them, they find a large, dead figure, which they assume is the alien pilot. And in several others, they find that the rooms are full of large eggs, stuck to the ground with some kind of alien goo. Instead of a hard shell, these eggs have a, have a fleshy outer covering. They're like a, a, almost a living organism in and of themselves. They have four fleshy flaps on top, and as the crew are looking around, one of the eggs uh, opens its flaps up. Its flesh kind of curls backward like a blooming flower. A member of the crew, uh, an officer named Kane, he goes to look into the egg sack, and gets attacked by a facehugger. This is some kind of intermediate stage in the alien life cycle. Both the intermediate stage and the parasitic incubation are actually biologically feasible and quite common. Many organisms on Earth have an intermediate stage in their life cycle, which acts as little more than a gamete transfer shuttle or some kind of vector like that. And there's another life cycle that involves the individual's like primary morphology that you might recognize. This is called the alternation of generations, and it's really common in plants and funguses. Many species of insects are known to forcefully impregnate other organisms with their eggs, such that the eggs enjoy the warm, moist protection of the inner guts of some other creature, like a spider or a crustacean. When the eggs hatch, the baby insects literally eat their host from the inside out, so that the host's body, its still living body, acts literally like a guaranteed meal for the newborn bugs. In the movie, the facehugger deposits an egg in Kane's stomach, and it rapidly grows into a fetus. As the panicked crew make the fateful decision to take Kane back on board, the alien fetus is inadvertently carried into the ship, and when it reaches term, some hours later, the alien fetus bursts out of Kane's chest in a spray of gore, and it slips away into the ventilation shafts of the ship. It's awful and nightmarish, and it makes for a great sci-fi horror scene. But as far as biology is concerned, I don't see anything impossible about this so far, with one exception. The alien grows stupidly fast. Through the whole film, the alien grows so ridiculously fast, it almost broke my suspension of disbelief. I mean, it, it kind of did, in a way. I mean, the alien entity grows from a fetus the size of a Subway sandwich 
to a murderous beast larger than a grown man, all in, like, the same day. It's just, it's a matter of hours. And this is ridiculous, because its body would need biomass from somewhere to grow. It can't just generate biomass out of nowhere. And as far as Officer Kane and his, I guess, his insides, it hadn't eaten anything at all. It hadn't eaten another crew member yet. I suppose it's hypothetically possible that the alien has a super efficient metabolism and can somehow digest and derive energy from damn near anything, kind of like a goat. If this is the case, and I suppose it would necessarily have to be considering how fast it grows, then it also makes sense that the alien's blood is highly acidic. Frankly, I think the acidity defies realism a little bit, because the blood flowing in the alien's organic veins is about as strong as super-potent industrial acid used to melt metals. The alien's blood melts through multiple decks on the ship, boiling right through the metal walkways and paneling. My problem with this is how does the alien's body not keep the acid from dissolving itself? How does it prevent its own blood from melting its own body? Does it melt the outside of its body, even though it apparently can't melt the inside? Uh, our stomach, the internal conditions of our stomach, is pretty acidic. And our stomach protects itself from the stomach acid by constantly producing new cells in the inner lining. This constant reproduction of cells keeps up with the rate of their decay as the stomach acid dissolves the outer layer. But if the alien entity were forced to do this with all of its veins all of the time, that would become ridiculously energy and nutrient intensive, like I impossible to handle. It would be a hugely limiting and disadvantageous evolutionary trait. Although, I suppose it might theoretically be possible if the alien was some kind of silicon or mixed silica carbon entity, with an alternative biochemistry that somehow allowed it to easily handle strong acids like that. The real core of the movie's horror comes from the alien hunting down and slaughtering the crew one by one, as they become increasingly desperate in their attempt to find and kill the alien. The sole survivor is the main character, an Ellen Ripley played by Sigourney Weaver. Ripley defeats the alien by blasting it out of an airlock, wherein the alien attempts to crawl into one of the ship's engines on the outside, but Ripley fires up the engine and blasts the alien into an ionized vapor. The movie ends with Ripley getting back into stasis, returning to where she started in the beginning of the movie, minus every other crew member. All in all, Alien is a great science fiction movie, and it's a great horror movie. It became a classic for a reason, and it presents a fascinating but creepy and unsettling universe for us to peer into. The way biology is presented in the movie is somewhat bipolar. The use of stasis for long trips through space the use of a human body as an embryonic host, that kind of stuff is possible, or at least feasible. But the alien's absurdly fast growth is, in my opinion, not feasible at all, and the acid blood is kind of cartoonish. Perhaps the acidic blood is somehow possible, but I'm, I'm just not seeing it. Not after seeing how the blood melts through multiple centimeters of solid metal in a matter of moments, no. I give the movie a strong 95, out of 100 for its plot, so you know, about 95%, 9.5 out of 10, whatever you want to rate it, but 75 out of 100 for its depiction of biology. The alien was badass, but some of its traits were just a little too Hollywood for me. Oh.